again, that's a, a big reason why we don't encourage inline styles. Um, but again, this kind this kind of thing is a general guideline. There will be use cases where you want you you inline style is the correct approach. So just understand that dif depends all depends on context. But that's how specificity works. Specificity basically is the who wins game of CSS. Question. Ah, uh -huh, important is the worst. Important will beat inline styles. But you can also put important inside inline styles. So this becomes a very, it's, it's like a very downward spiral of overriding the override and override, making it more and more specific. And it makes it very unmaintainable. Um, that's the, in fact, that's the biggest complaint that most web developers have about CSS is in that every time the project passes to a new person, imagine if your project very big. And now our style is quite simple, like about maybe 30, 50 lines, right? There will be projects that have thousands of lines of CSS. Most people are not going to scroll through thousand to find out, oh, 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 he put a class here. We're going to change the class. They're just like, huh, bottom wins, right? I'll just put it at the bottom. If that doesn't work, okay, make it more, I just important it. And that's, that's, that works. That works on the front end. But for maintainability, can you imagine? Developer two put important. Developer three comes along, I need to change the style again. And I, eh, shit, cannot. I import, then I make it more specific. So I like, oh, put ID, then make it important, okay. Because this kind of thing is additive, ma. You just add one more, add one more value, add one more value, can really. And then it just gets so, unmaintainable that the last person to look at this like this doesn't work at all. I cannot I cannot change this style and then you'll just like give up. Yes. Important makes it very specific. So I only stop here. But here is where important lies. Important can trump inline styles. And if you want to trump important, you will put the important in your inline style can trump again. So like I said, this is a negative spiral, let's not do this. Let, let's just keep it, keep it here. That's why I say, try not to do IDs also, just try to keep it here. Let's keep it here and make life easier for everybody. So that's specificity. And so what, let, let's do some, let's fix the problem that has been annoying everybody, which is, Let's make this image a reasonable size, first and foremost. <coughs> Let me bring this back. So, if you have multiple images in your project, right, maybe you want to give your image a class to differentiate unless you want all the images to be the same width. But for mine, I only have one rabbit, so I'm just going to do uh, the element. Um, so the <laughs> width is just width. Lah, huh? But values, ah, there are different types of values you can use. So the most basic one is pixels. Pixels are fixed. If I say 200 pixels and I save, right? 200 pixels, like that. And if you notice for images, images have a... Browsers know to respect aspect ratio. Like when I set the width, I didn't need to set a height. The, it, it shrunk like the aspect ratio was kept. But if you, how to say, I call it itchy fingers. Itchy fingers, I go and set both the height and the width, right? The browser will respect you because you are the master of your computer, but you'll distort your own image if you do that. So I guess sometimes, unless you are, you really want to do this, like maybe it's a, it's a pattern distort for artistic purposes, that's fine. But usually just setting one dimension is fine. Browser will take care of the aspect ratio for you, right? So I'm not, I'm going to get rid of this. So oh, uh, you, can, you can change the size based on the height also, because the, the, the browser will adjust the width accordingly. So that's to check, yes, please. Video, video, uh, on the top of my head, I think can, uh, let me try. 
Uh, yes, the answer is yes, you can also change the height of video. Um, but what I mentioned just now is that the display property. Uh, I usually, if it's an image like that, I would like it to take up the whole space. So I want it to behave like a block level element. So for your image, right, if you want that effect, you can set it to display block. So then it will act like a block. It will command all the space in the container. Uh, and conversely, you... This, for my particular, this setup is a bit... Uh, you probably won't want this, but you can also make change the block to inline. Like, like, get it to display inline. I'm not, you not sure why you want to do this, but uh, for for my case, it's not not necessary. But you can do that also. So you can modify the behavior by changing this display property. Uh, I don't want this. Take it away. Take this away. So I mentioned pixels. Pixels are very fixed. So it doesn't matter how big or small your screen is, 200 pixels is 200 pixels. So like say I have a lot of space. Like can it automatically take up more space? The answer is yes. By using something called a percentage. So if I Put something like. So what happens is that I'm telling my browser, uh, make the image fifty percent of the container. So when I adjust, it can grow and it can shrink, and I don't. You, I don't have to do anything about it. So. Ideally, in this day and age, most people, you cannot control how people view your website. It could be on a phone. A lot of people use phones these days. Uh, I have some friends who have uh, really nice home setups with their 50-inch television screen, then also use their TV to scroll website. I'm like, oh, sure. But the point is that it could be very big, very small. You really don't know what size it is. So if you use a fixed with... For example, okay, I think most of us are computer about 13 to 15 inch. You could put a fixed uh, pixel with like half of half of 1280 could be like 640. Oh, 640 looks quite nice on my computer. 640 on the phone is just going to overflow. Like, eh, what happened? I can only see the rabbits, but not very nice. Then on a 50 inch screen, then you can only see like, oh, you're very small. What is this creature? So I did want to use a, a, a flexible value. So percentage is a, a, is a good choice. So that you're like, regardless of what is the width of the, the, the device that the person viewing it, adjusted accordingly. So unless you're very sure that a fixed width for this particular element, for any screen size is fine, try to use a, a flexible width. I think it, it works. Works better in most cases. Can I have a question? Yes, please. Let's say, you know, as we make try and error, you know, like in other, like Python, they have a hex to keep comments so as I can keep whatever I've previously mm. done. So, how do I keep that hex? No, in CSS, to comment out, keep, 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 so that I don't delete it and it won't run. The syntax is a backslash and an asterisk. If you are using VS Code, 
uh, on Windows, you hold command backslash. On, win, uh, on, on Mac, you use command backslash. Windows, use control backslash. It will do this automatically. Otherwise, you can type it by hand. A uh, backslash asterisk at the, at the back is asterisk backslash. Anything between these symbols are com considered commented out means browser ignore. Treat it as not there. So if I do this, usually your code editor will gray it out to indicate to you that this rule not this property not being read. So that's how you would like she mentioned for trial and error, you type a lot of things, but then you like maybe I want to put it back later. I don't want to delay and retype. You can use this to quote unquote comment it out. We call it commented out. So every every language has a different syntax. Actually you can do it for HTML also. HTML the syntax I cannot remember, but it's a it's a like exclamation mark dash dash. HTML also can comment out. Um, so it'd be nice to use a, a, a code editor to help you with this. So if you're using a Mac, it's command backslash. If you're using Windows machine, it's control backslash. For the person using Linux, I need to test on your computer. I can, I'm not sure. Does it work? Oh, which one? I just if you like want to comment oh, out, oh. like for example, uh, maybe you say you don't want the, you don't want this line for poems, right? Oh, okay. Like, I, but you don't want to delete it because maybe you want to put it back later. Huh? Oh, I think con, uh, for, for, oh, yeah, oh, Linux yeah. use control also. Today I learned something new. Um, So that, that's, that's with, right? And I'm going to continue on explaining something called the box model. This is relevant because for now you notice all your elements are on the left, aligned left. Um, back to my favorite Microsoft Word analogy. In Microsoft Word, right, uh, we can align text to the right. There are these four icons, right? Left align, center align, right align, and justify. Guess what? You can also do it in the, on the web with uh, CSS. So for text, for anything that is text related, it actually behaves very similar to Microsoft Word. So if you can use Microsoft Word, uh, you are, you are uh, already on a, have a good base uh, for doing web development. So if I want to do, I'm going to explain why I'm doing this later. Oh, yeah. So if I want to align it, text, ah, text, align it to the right. I can use text align right, align it to the center, then you use text align center. The thing about center is American spelling, my friends. T E R, not T R E, because annoyingly CSS invented by American English person. Uh, Justify is okay, like it works, but. Oh, justify doesn't. Okay, there's a reason for this. Let me think about it. But uh, you, if you're having a long block of text, like a P, you can text a line justify. And then it will sort of like kiss the edges. So that, that's for texty things, texty things. To align text. Aren't you obliged to help your mother understand to why you like that? Okay, now. what's oh, the problem? Okay, just now you say li, right? Yes. So li. Uh. The number of these things, words move, this one don't move. Yes. Li. So yes. Li. Yes. Who's using Chrome? Anybody using Firefox? I will. I also got both browsers. So there's a uh, there's an annoying thing uh, about 
about browsers, about the web. Chrome, la, Firefox, la, Edge, la, Safari, these are all browsers, but they were all built by different companies. Different companies, different engineers, different engineers, different type of brain, all of them built their browsers differently. So, in this day and age, it's not as bad. But back in the 90s, it was quite bad in that. Every browser renders things differently. Now, right, there's so, so, some sort of standard whereby you say that, okay, if I apply display block to this element, do this. There's a general agreement among all browser vendors to follow uh, a set of standards. But there are little things, very little things, like this. Like someone just pointed out that if you... I, on Firefox, when I text a line right, my numbers go with my text. On Chrome, my numbers never follow my text. Um, yes, unfortunately, this is one of those little things that um, different browsers do differently. I think because Chrome has this problem, Safari may have the same problem because they use a similar engine. Um, this, is the annoy this is probably going to be the most annoying part if you decide to pursue web development moving forward. It is to cater for all these different use cases. The fact that somehow the same code looks different on different browsers. Unfortunately, that is a fact of life that we have to accept. Okay? A lot of things in life we cannot control. This we cannot control, we must accept. And then we, once we accept, we will not be angry and then we can think of ways to deal with this. Uh, there are a few ways we can deal with this. Uh, I will elaborate on if we have time. Uh, for now, let's just do what we call accept. Okay? <laughs> ah, yes. It's a, it, it's a thing. It's a legit thing. To overcome this, you just put U I. U L. Um, it unfortunately doesn't really work that way. Uh, for example, right, uh, if you try to do UL text align, it doesn't, it doesn't work because the, the, you are trying to align, you are trying to say the, the text inside list align to the right. When you say UL align, text align right, the, the browser doesn't understand. Because the UL itself doesn't have any text content. The UL wraps LI. The content is inside the LI. So if you want to push this text to the right, you have to say browser the text inside LI push to the right. Okay. Yeah, so that's why that's that's the that's the issue. Um, so unfortunately, let's do something. So for example, right, if I Oh no, I just had a thought. This might work, man. I'm sorry. Ah, crap. Uh, text, align, text align cascades. Uh, text align is inherited. This one I forgot. Text align is an inheritable property. I made a mistake. I thought it couldn't, but it actually can. Uh, so, explanation, Salah. Apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you want to apply on the UL, it, it will work. Because uh, for my case, I'm using OL and I forgot. So what happened just now when it didn't work, I don't have any OLs on my page. So when you try to do this, uh, the browser will just ignore all. They're like, oh, uh, she probably typed something wrong. Ignore. Uh, and that's why nothing happened. Uh, I use OL, so... Unfortunately, the same issue still happens. Lah, huh? But yes, you can target you can target uh, UOL as well, uh, your UL, your list parent as well. So that, that's, but that's for, that's for aligning texty things. Uh, what I'm trying, the, 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 the bit I'm covering right now is uh, aligning stuff. Because a lot of times you don't want everything on the left. So for texty stuff, you can use this text align property. But for non-texty stuff, for example, the if 
anything that is in line works with text aligned. But if it's not in line, it doesn't. So by default, right? By default, uh, an image will align center. Oh, let me get rid of my stupid text first. Sorry. If I want everything to be centered, everything to be centered, I can just put it on the body. Text, text align center on the body. Everyone will align together. That's because at this point in time, image is also an uh, inline element. Block element takes up all the space in a container. So this part of the explanation might not make sense to you right now. Because I say block elements text, text align doesn't apply. But how come all these text right, can align center? Leh? That's because, think of it, P wraps text, LI wraps text. So the container itself will take up the space. But the text that lives inside the container, I can align. Um, but for something like an image, the image is just one thing. It doesn't have a container. It's, it's, sing, it's, 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 it's just image has no content, remember? I said earlier. So if image ever becomes a block, right? The text align property doesn't affect it anymore because it's not in line. Display block, if you have anything that is display block, so that uh, I will introduce another tag called a div. A div is like a con, yes. Okay, uh, I have been informed that the food has arrived, so I will continue my sentence after you all have eaten food. <laughs> so. No, it, it make, it's a very long sentence. So please go and eat the food first. I will restart the sentence. Yes. This 